what's in your eyes There's no question in your mind God Almighty God of mercy There's no hiding from There's no striving in your grace, God of mercy, God Almighty.
there's no darkness in your way, so have your way. Lord, have your way. Amen. Come on, let's thank our God. Let there be light. They have done an amazing job today. And it was a coordinated effort, and I just want to thank them for the excellence with which they did everything. You all may be seated. Because really, it is all about light. This season is about light. When you go through uh, the streets and you, you see at night the lights, people's houses are illuminated with signs of the season. In fact, you know, we have the national Christmas tree lighting, or many people go up to the Rockefeller Christmas tree lighting, and there's just something about light that attracts us during this season. But what I want us to understand is that the lights that are most important about this season are not the ones that you see on street signs and not on Christmas trees or, or trimming houses, but there's a greater light that God calls us to understand as well as to appreciate, and that is the light that only comes from God. And this season, I want to encourage all of us to remember that we have the light that as believers, we are partakers. We share in the light that only comes from our God. Here's what the Bible says about Jesus in John chapter 1. He says, the word gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought light to everyone. That when Jesus' life was given in this earth, when he was born in a manger, he opened up an opportunity for there to be light. And the Bible goes on to say that the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it Which means that no matter how dark it may become around us, God's light can still shine strong. And that's what we can't forget. Regardless of how this season may have approached you, there may be some darkness in your home. There may be some darkness in your own personal life. There may be darkness in your health, darkness in your finances, in your career path. There may be darkness that seems to be all around you. And I want you to know today on this Christmas Eve that darkness does not have the final word because God sent Jesus to bring us all light and that light can never be extinguished by the darkness. And so I want you today to really embrace the fact that there is a light that God wants to shine. That God wants us as his children to be vehicles through whom his light can shine. And so on the night that Jesus was born, it was all about light. Look at how the Bible records in Luke chapter 2 the coming of, of Jesus into the world. The Bible starts by saying that night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby. Such a quiet pastoral scene. They were used to the stars that would shine at night, and they would just watch over the sheep to ensure that there were no predators that would come in and decimate the, their flock. 
And while they were watching over the fields, guarding their flocks of sheep, suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them. And the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. Now, there were no electrical lights back then. There were no flashlights. There was only the glory that came from this angel that lit up their night. And it, was, it lit up their night so much that it startled these shepherds because they had never encountered a light like this. And the Bible says that they were terrified. But the angel reassured them. And here's what the angel said, three powerful words that I want to remind you of this Christmas season. The angel said, don't be afraid. And so I want to ask you today, are, are there areas today where you are fearful? Are you afraid of tomorrow? Are you afraid of what happens when the family gets together? Are you afraid of, of the, the dynamics that may occur? Are you afraid of what's going on in your children's lives because they're disconnected and they're not acting the way that they're supposed to act? Are you afraid of what happens in the new year with your employment? Is there fear that is somehow encroaching on your life? Well, I want you to know that the message from the angel to the shepherds is relevant to you on this Christmas Eve, and that is simply don't be afraid. Because when the light comes, the light brings good news. And that good news brings great joy to all people. And I know we're in an age now where we're talking about fake news and alternative facts, and we're talking about all those types of things. But one bit of news has not changed regardless of the season. And that is the good news that comes from Jesus Christ. And that is the news that has been entrusted to us as God's children. And that good news is summed up just like the angel said it. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. The good news that we have is that there is a Savior. Now, the word Savior means deliverer, rescuer, Someone who gets you out of trouble. And so the good news is, no matter where you may find yourself, God has sent you someone to rescue you from that situation. You may be in a prison of depression. You may be in a prison of just of being overwhelmed by life. You may dread the coming of the holiday because you're a prisoner to grief and loss. And God is saying to you today that there is good news. There is a Savior. You do not have to be locked into the prison of your own pain, but you can be free from that because when Jesus came, he brings light. And when his light shines, all darkness must be dispelled. And so I want to give you three truths today on this Christmas Eve that I simply want you to remember whenever you see a light, whether it's a light bulb, whether it's a, a headlight, whether it's the lights at your own house, whether it's Christmas tree lights, whenever you see light, these are the three truths that I want you to remember. The first is this, God is light. During this Christmas season and all throughout the year, it should be remembered that God is light. Not that he just gives light or that God shines light, but he is light. And in the ever, never-ending battle between darkness and light, we need to know that when we are with God, we are with the light. And darkness is nothing more than the absence of light. So why is the world becoming more dark? It's because we've pushed the light out. Why have our schools become battlegrounds? It's because we pushed the light out. Why is our country and this world becoming darker and darker and more dangerous? It's because we pushed the light out. And the moment that we push the light out, Darkness, which is nothing more than the void of light, starts to permeate. But we have hope this Christmas season because we know that our God is light. And we've seen this from the beginning of the Bible. In Genesis chapter 1, God makes it clear. The first 
thing that God says when the earth is without form and void and darkness covers the face of the earth. God says, let there be light. And hum creation all responded and light appeared. Now, there were no light bulbs. There were no flashlights. There was no electricity in the beginning of time. So how could God speak, let there be light, and light appeared? It is because that light was inside of God. And the moment he spoke it, his light began to flow. In fact, scientists say that life started moving from that point, and it has continued to move at light speed even today. Light cannot be stopped because God spoke it into existence. We are blessed by human lights that come through electricity, but there is a brighter light that shines, and that is the light that comes from God. And I believe God is saying in all of our lives and all of our families on this day, let there be light so that no darkness can remain in our homes. No darkness can remain in our marriages, but that his light will bring hope and joy and peace and love. And so first John says this, this is the message we heard from Jesus and now declare to you, God is light. And there is no darkness in him at all. And so if you're looking for hope this season, it comes from God who is light. If you're tired of the darkness, if you're tired of the mental darkness, the emotional darkness, the spiritual darkness, all you have to do is open yourself up to the God of light, and he'll shine in your life. The second truth I want you to understand on this Christmas Eve is that Jesus is God's light to the world. Not only is God light, but God is eternal, God is everlasting, God is a spirit, and he is light. But he takes all of that light and he packages it in Jesus so that when Jesus comes to the world, he shines God's light for all to see. And that's why Jesus is important. That's why you cannot get to God except through Jesus. Because Jesus is the one that shows us who God is and how much God loves us. Here's what Jesus said. Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. And may I submit to you today that the reason why there's so much darkness is simply because we have not let the light in. And until we let the light into our culture, it will keep on getting dark. You don't need to be a social scientist. You don't need to be a political operative to understand how to solve the problems that are happening all around us. God already gave us the answer, and the answer is Jesus. Regardless of the governmental structure, regardless of the language that is spoken, regardless of the country of origin, no matter where we are, no matter what we do, what, no matter what we're facing, if we want hope, it comes in the form of a baby wrapped in rags, lying in a manger for the whole world to understand that God loves people from the guttermost to the uttermost. And that is the joy that we have this season, that our God gives us light and and that light is shown through Jesus Christ. So you don't have to live in darkness. You don't even have to accept darkness in your life. Because when you follow Jesus, you don't have to walk in darkness. Because you now have a, a great light. And that great light leads to life. And that word life there is zoe, abundant light. God's light points to life. And then third truth I want you to remember, whenever you see lights, when you look at the lights at your home or the lights on the street as you go, as you go home this, tonight, 
I want you to remember that you can carry that light. That not only is God light, not only is Jesus God's light to the world, but we now have an opportunity to choose to be light or to be darkness. And I wonder over this holiday season, over this Christmas season, in fact, tomorrow when your family gathers, what choice will you make? Will you choose to be light or will you choose to be a part of the darkness? There's family that's going to gather around our houses, some family you have not seen in a long time, and some family you wish you weren't going to see for a long time. And inevitably, there are some kinds of tensions that will come up. There will be a political discussion. There will be some kind of discussion about world events that will cause tension to, to arise at the table. And I just wonder, will you in that moment choose to be light? Choose to carry God's light into that discussion and don't allow that discussion to destroy what God wants to have happen. Will you be the one in the midst of hatred and division to be the source of love? Will you be the one where people are depressed and sad and, and they're overcome by depression? Will you be the one who brings them joy in a, in, a, in a heart that is pained, in a heart that is tormented and there's turmoil? Will you be the one who shines the light of peace into that situation? Will you be the one when people have given up hope that you'll be the one who shines the light of hope into their lives? There are enough negative people around. There's enough darkness that is around. God wants us to carry his light to all humanity. And it starts in our own home. And so here's what Jesus says. He says, put your trust in the light while there's still time. So let me pause right here and just challenge all of us. Experiencing the light is only one facet of what God wants you to do. He ultimately wants you to trust in the light. God, if you say Jesus is the light of the world, I want that light in my life because I refuse to live in darkness anymore. And when I trust the light who is Jesus, then I become a child of the light. And that's what God is calling for all of us to be, to be children of the light. And so we have to let our light shine. No matter where we are, we have to let our light shine. If you brave the after Christmas sales on December 26th, let your light shine. When your family gathers from near and far, let your light shine shine. When trouble comes even knocking at your own door, let your light shine. Because when you let your light shine, it really is not your light. It is God's light that shines through Jesus, through you. And his light can never be overcome by darkness. And so I want to encourage you to walk in the light. It's a beautiful light. In fact, if people are in darkness, why don't you invite them? Come where the dewdrops of mercy shine bright. Shine all around me by day and by night because Jesus is the light of the world. Amen.